Welcome back, everybody, to Raven Star's Witching Hour. I am your host, Solaris Blue Raven. My excellent guest tonight is John Storm. John, it's such a good, uh, wonderful feeling to have you on tonight. I really enjoy your company and your information. You're so wise and experienced. So thanks for joining us again. My pleasure. Yeah, and happy Chinese New Year, by the way. I know that's... Uh... Ah, gong hei fa choy. <laughs> yes, and it, let it be a, a wonderful one, this one. No more sabotage. I'd like that, yeah. yeah no I'd more like craziness that. going on here. We have a question from Bella. It looks like um, she's asking me, but I think she's really asking you. Is, is Hillary Wiccan? It's a funny question. No, uh, she's a luminist. There you go. She's a luminist. Uh, um, uh, 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 we got some family friends. That she goes. She's, she's, she's a genuine deal. She's a, a matter of fact, a few years, well, actually, it's probably when they were when they were still in the White House when Bill Clinton was president. But somebody somewhere did an article. Uh, it was like a photographic article because she had these Christmas ornaments for her Christmas tree there at the White House. And some of those things are like, if you can ever find that article, the pictures, they are like obvious. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, so can you go into a little more details as far as where... Um, so is she craft oriented then? Yes, she's an Illuminist witch. Okay. Yeah, so connected uh, to Illuminati. Yep. Yep. Okay. She, you know, that that whole you, you've you've heard that stuff about all these presidents being related to royal family. Well, she is too. The the Rod and Ron Ham, they're they're connected. They're they're connected to those particular weirding clans. Interesting. I think there's some old, old blood. I mean, I know a lot of us have old blood. I know I do. So um. yeah, yeah, I do too. I, I'm even related to some of them. Mm-hmm. And, you know, across it over the centuries, there, there, originally according to Enoch, there was like over 200 weirding clans, and, and this was your extraterrestrial connection and genetics. Uh, you know, how, however, you know, people kind of freak out because I look at the fairy thing maybe just a little bit differently, and I look at the ET thing kind of. I, I kind of switch back and forth, but it's actually the same thing to me. Right. No, I understand. Uh, yeah, you know, absolutely. Uh, uh, um, and how I look at them. Um, but uh, those That's... clans have intermixed and everything. I, I think in, in, in my family, I think I'm about like four cousins removed from the Spencers, from, from Princess Di. Are you really? Yeah, yeah. Interesting. I think I think you and I might be related. Um, I won't go into detail. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I've got some interesting blood there. But you know what's interesting? Even though we might all be connected on a, on a hereditary level through some weird clan or whatever, mm-hmm. it, we, we have a choice to do good or bad with our craft or with Absolutely. magic or consciousness. And this is what I'm wondering, John, what, what creates these, these evil people? I mean, what is it about them that just poisons their spirits? Uh I don't. I don't know. Maybe maybe they started out bad, or or uh, well, we all have our choices, mm-hmm. and we choose. I I, I get very philo- philosophical and metaphysical about that because it, it's a strange thing about evil, how evil actually came about, and there's a lot of well, there's a number of very very intriguing philosophies about that that I don't quite follow quite well (laughs) i i I, maybe that's where my brain being rewired and everything didn't quite get rewired right because i don't understand where that came came from exactly Mm -hmm. uh but there is a it's like we're all a spark of this original source um you know you can call it god but if you do call it god call it capital g capital o capital d because there's all kinds of gods usually little g and then there's the capital G, lowercase O-D, cranky old white man that sits on the throne in the clouds, giving everybody a hard time, telling he only likes one race better than everybody else. <laughs> you know, <laughs> there's all kinds of guys. So you, if you're a piece, if you're a spark of that consciousness, except your gift, actually everybody's gift, is free will. You're that pure spark of the purest spark of life there is, given your own free will to travel anywhere you want, and this ultimate mind is going to experience reality through you, from your perspectives. And um, now how that gets off where it goes bad and goes against creation and, and perversion and twisted, I don't know what does that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can see where we do it. I can see where I've done things in my past that I wasn't wise about. You know, I, I didn't see 
you know, you, you think you're going to make some kind of profit or this is going to do you some good and it actually all goes to hell in a handbasket, but you don't understand that until you've experienced it. And and once I've experienced it, it's kind of like, okay, I don't want to do that again. Right. And, uh, and these people seem to like what more. Yeah, they're almost like empty vessels that are just parasitic at this point. They're just looking for prana and life force. That's what they strike me as. They're just feeders. I mean, I generate. I know I, I'm a conduit. I know you are, too. You generate yeah. the energy. Um, and so do I. But these people seem like they have to bleed it off of everybody else. They Well, so all of us feed to some extent, mm-hmm. um, e- even among the... Now, everybody's, re- you know, if you're Cro-Magnon, which every one of us listening is, uh, uh, um, all of us are hybrids. To exactly what degree? Well, that varies for some odd reason. Uh, you know, out of 64 possible genetic switches to be turned on, most human beings only have on about 20, which means mm-hmm. there's about 40-something that's that's there to be on, but they're not. Some right. of us have more on or less on than others. Uh, um, and exactly how that uh, it holds us back or we go forward with it. But it's all based on our own choices. Uh, rise or fall, we learn from it or we don't learn from it. Mm-hmm. Or we learn something twisted. Right. Uh, um you know, it, it, people always compare the devil like with the ultimate th- experience of evil, but biblically that's not true. Uh, he's never been God's equal. He's never been that. He's a created being like the rest of us, just on a higher scale. Uh, um, but he's not like the ultimate epitome. He got it from somewhere or something something untoward, something unprofitable, something... Why would somebody... You know, that's that seems to be the whole nature of our world. You know, mm-hmm. even, even as I look around, you know, all these reasonably handsome, handsome men will all of a sudden want to become very ugly women. Right. Yeah. Bizarro. Uh, well, it's a program. And I think a lot of it is socially engineered. I mean, I don't believe people mm-hmm. are, are in any form of design close to their potential as what they are supposed to be as multidimensional mm-hmm. or spiritual beings. I just don't see it at all. Uh, I think those of us who have done the path or are on the path of, of the craft or other paths, mm-hmm. we understand consciousness at such a level that we can see beyond it all. We're like the spy birds. But these people, right. there's so I've many. They've been stunted, too, mm-hmm. for a very long time. Right. Uh, for many generations, they, they've been stunted from growing further on their their spiritual evolutionary path. Uh, um, they, you know, it, 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 we've really been stunted and, and, and kind of bred like those funny looking little dogs, you know, that all malformed. It's like this poor creature could never exist or thrive in nature on his own he's been so twisted up so that some human being would think he was cute and put clothes on him and treat him like a little human being Mm -hmm. we're so twisted nothing's nothing's right nothing's natural nobody's got they don't even have an affinity for it anymore Mm -hmm. right yeah there is well i think a lot of that as you were saying is it's socially engineered and too much tampering with and the tampering seems like it's been coming from these covert agencies you know the the military industrial complex comes to mind and some other areas that are literally just there to um to switch people off to such a level that they don't embrace their multidimensional design i think that has a lot to do with our access to the multiverse and and how we can communicate naturally we don't need them i think once they realize we don't need them then of course their their control goes out the window uh, obviously and as you were touched on earlier they are control freaks they are knowledge is power and and bad knowledge well they have a saying, you know, they, uh, actually a lot of their sayings have more than one meaning or levels of meanings. Uh, the little eye in the pyramid, in the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. All right. Mm-hmm. They've been destroying knowledge, you know, burning the libraries like Alexandria. And there's been some, fent- there's, there's a whole history we don't have anymore because of that. Right. Yep. All right. There's things that we should know about our history. We don't. We are wondering all this stuff going on, pyramids and Antarctica and all this other kind of stuff. And all that history has been there, but it's been covered up. They've been buffaloing us and, and, and that since since they start coming into power mm-hmm. or, 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 or consolidating their power over the minds of people. They've used religion. They've used social structure. They've used royalty, authority. They've used academia. Mm-hmm. You know everything they, they 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 could to to keep on top of the pyramid 
and having the masses kind of kind of holding them up. Right. And I think what they weren't counting on is that we do, as in Jurassic Park, life finds a way. So does consciousness. And we are hybrids, as you were touching on. And with that comes, we, are, we can activate through frequency at any time. So when we do activate, I think that's a huge threat to them. I, I'm, I'm sure of it because there's a whole lot of things activated about me that yep. when they try and they push it against me, it don't work. That's right. But <laughs> it doesn't. You can get cocky about it. I, God knows I have. Well, good for it, you. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. Well, every once in a while, see, they, 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 and some other friends of mine that I'm, I'm, I'm helping through some of this stuff. I, I'm dealing with other ultras. Um, they have some of the, if they can't make, if they can't push you, they'll push the closest person to you. Mm -hmm. So in trying to be strong, I put myself in a position where I have to be lonely. Mm -hmm, right. Um, the, the people that I get close to, you know, when I got married, it was my wife. They couldn't. You, you can threaten me all day long. You get too close, you get dead. Uh, there's no threat. If I can kill it, I'm not afraid of it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it's not that I want to go around killing any people all the time. Actually, it's quite the opposite. Mm -hmm, right. <laughs> uh, uh, but they'd rather have what they'd rather have, you know. Um, they don't care about good uh mm -hmm. they just care about what they want and how they can get more of it they're yeah. they're addicts to to everything um yeah, say they're not really evolving and it's like if you or i start just a little bit goes a long way i'm one person you know overwhelmed I, I, you know i remember this from the beginning you know the darkness the pain the, the fear you know all the time mm -hmm. um you know, uh, um, and over time, you just get a little bit of elbow room and a little bit more, and you're flexing a little bit more, and they're backing up. There's just one of you, just a poor, weak little thing in the dark, all by yourself. Nobody knows. Nobody cares. Nobody can hear you. And even when you speak, they don't believe you because they think you're crazy. You couldn't possibly know the world as well as they do, and they have no idea what's in the dark under the bed. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, it, you know. Uh, it, you 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 fight it. You're constantly pitting yourself against it. Um, I don't know life any other way, but I want to. You know, mm -hmm. I I I have connected with my my Lord, and my Lady, my Creator, and you know the Father of all spirits and and Mother Nature, and I'm their boy, and that's what I want to be, and that's you know where my heart is at. And, and, you know, my siblings, I got all, I got a married of siblings. See, my family got taken away from me. My loved ones, they always attack the loved ones mm -hmm. or the people closest to you. They can't hurt you, but they can hurt them and then make you feel guilty. Mm -hmm. So you got to stand up by yourself a lot. Um, you know, friends, keep your friends at about arm's length. Even if you want to just reach out and hug them. If you really love them, you'll keep them at arm's length so nobody figures, gets inspired to do them harm just mm -hmm. to get at you. Right. Uh, you know, it, it's the kind of thing you have, to, you know, this is a terrible way to live a life. It is. Yeah, it's but, very lonely. Yeah. But I meet some fantastic people. Some people, when they do say they want to help you or they care, they really do. Mm -hmm. And they really have. And it's amazing. You know, somebody send me a couple bottles of vitamins and then all of a sudden I, I you know I lost about a third of my body weight and it just pops back out in a couple weeks nice you know uh that's amazing yeah but that's love too that, yeah, it that's, is. A, that's a physical manifestation somebody felt lit I didn't ask for it and I didn't ask specifically for those things but they felt lit they were driven by their, they, you know, it was more than just warm, fuzzy feelings. There was substance to this. Mm -hmm. And when these pills hit my hand and got taken like they, you know, as per the directions on the bottle and all that other kind of stuff, boom, things happened that really, you just wouldn't believe it unless you saw it. You mm -hmm. know, you, normal people don't have stuff like this. You know, That's it's, right. uh, you know, uh, 
a very um, deep spiritual communication on, on many levels. And I, that's what I mean by um, there are people out there who, who understand the language of what's really happening here on a on a multidimensional scale. And I agree with you on that one. And, you know, just by looking at some of your old photographs and then the now photographs, I mean, the way you've changed. And, yeah, obviously that you're regenerating to some degree. And that's I think that is through a lot of positive energy and a lot of uh, mystical alchemy at the highest level with just unconditional love mixed in there, you know. Yeah, he's got. They got something in mind. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Well, you're not ready to go anywhere yet. I keep no, telling you that, it, you know. Yeah, and I still got all this fight in me. It's you do. Kind of, you're just um. Yeah, you just that's. I'm like that too. I should have been gone about five, six years ago. If you ask me. So I get it. Um, we just keep going. It's like by will alone, you know. But you know, there's a question here again. Um, I don't know if you answered this or not, but it was from Olive again. Uh, Solaris asked John, "Does he take CBD oil, hemp oil, or just cannabis?" Uh, actually, I take the, uh, the, the hemp oil, though every once in a while because we have it, and, uh, and it helps with the, uh, it also helps with the anxiety. Um, the, mm -hmm. I, I, I wouldn't call myself crippled by anxiety. It's something I pretty much had to live with my whole life. But it's nice to have a little break now. And, and, and again, we try the flowers. We're trying for different uh, effects. Some of these things have different effects. One will help increase your appetite, and uh, others that now they 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 did say something about they have some that's working on diabetes. I have noticed a lessening in my numbers of my glucose readings that I do every day. Um, noticeably, not drastically, but then my diabetes is so far out of control it's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. But I'm seeing the best numbers that I've seen since I've had diabetes. That's great. So do you have you don't have to take the insulin though, do you? I've no, I still I have I have two types of insulin that I still got to take as much as five times a day. Wow. Um, depending, but I've been taking a little lot less because I haven't needed it Good. past a certain point. Because and I believe that's because of some of the stuff we're trying. And this is all medicinal cannabis. We're just you know. Not getting goo i didn't want to stop those cold turkey i had intention of seeing a doctor and then start getting weaned off of it because you know even the pharmacist where you don't stop that stuff like that mm -hmm. you, you got to get weaned off of it over the course of a year uh, or or more in some cases but uh i would that was my intentions of switching to these this way safely but since they gone and and uh did me up with the refills i mean the refills are almost killing me half the time. Last year, it was ridiculous, you know, refill problem after refill problem. And it's like, I got to have something. And it's like, wow, okay, the pharmacist was nice, gave me some extra lisinopril so I wouldn't run out during the 4th of July weekend, step out of the freaking uh, uh, pharmacy, go to cross the street to go home, get run over by, hit and run by an SUV. Yeah, I remember you telling me that. Yeah, yeah. not that, by accident. It, no, it, it was like one thing after another after, mm -hmm. and it's still like that. And uh, I'm starting to see, you know, Barry and Melissa are, are going through some of the same things. Some of the other people that I'm dealing with mm -hmm. have some very similar things going. I was kind of hoping for a while that things would happen where all these clandestine agencies that get so busy with their hands full that they wouldn't have time to bother with us. Mm -hmm. um, I keep hoping. I I. I, I Thought I saw that maybe somewhere in the near near future, but it's, if anything, it seems like they've turned up the heat. I agree with you, and I was going to say that um, that they have turned up the heat. I think they started turning up the heat even about two years ago. But it yeah. seems to me like uh, I think electronically, psychotronically, and, and covertly with the signals, they've been ramping that up for the past, I'd say, at least six months. Yeah. yeah. So they're up to no good. And, you know, we, we can talk a little bit about I, I don't know i mean obviously there are people out there who are targeted individuals which is just another dovetail of mind control and then there are the other things that are going on but but it does seem like people are being um uh, how do you just say it uh, they're, they're they're really starting to push people they're starting to drive people into possible uh reaction to a point where they're destructive to themselves or to other people that's why i i did that one video i highly recommend it you know anybody sees my storm 53 uh mm -hmm. uh uh, YouTube channel that CYA uh, it's about an hour long video basically I do my best kind of show you some little tricks that I learned along the way you're dealing with spies mainly it's spies that's you know not black magicians as some people you know I've been you know I was very upset when when Spears look we, we 
ain't exactly like best bud. Well, I'm not his enemy either, or never was. But, you know, Max Spears died in it, all this stuff warning mm-hmm. people about black magicians. And it's kind of like, look, there's very, not that black magicians aren't real. Not that they very much are, but they are not really the biggest part of the things the 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 where the rubber hits the road with these people you're not going to have no arch warlock casting spells on you 24 hours a day people that filthy stinking rich have got better things to do with their time than play around with you and me mm-hmm. all right you know they, they they got bigger goals or agendas it's these spies the psychotronics the the people that are hacking uh, uh, they know every email you go, you, you, you get when your, you know, your medical files get put. I've had my files corrupted before I even left the office. Mm-hmm. All right. Jeez. And yeah. in, in, in my video there, I kind of show some of that, you know, on, on my yeah. paper files and, and how to cover for that, because these are the things you got to watch for. These are spies messing with you, collecting the information, twisting what they can around is what they've been doing since their inception. And knowing how they think and how they work, well, you you just got to beat them at their own game. And it's not incredibly hard because these people aren't known for their creative thinking. No, and one thing I love about you, John, is that you document everything. There's there's such a paper trail with you and a video trail with you about what you've gone through. Um, I love the documentation you put out on that last video because that way it covers you completely. Right. You know, even like with the, you know, I, I, I got Bear and Melissa and, uh, uh, one of those little thumb drive looking recorders. Now, when they go to their doctor's offices and stuff like that, they, we, we had a few trips to emergency these last couple of weeks and stuff. Uh, like I say, we're all damaged goods and we kind of try to hold each other up in that. But we turn on those recorders before we talk to a doctor or anybody else and stick them down in our pocket and just kind of forget about it for a little while. But you got to cover it because they'll say, well, it, we, I didn't say that. I said this and oh, I meant that. And it's and, and they'll try to make you look crazy. And, mm-hmm. and I document in that in that video even how they've tried to do that. And it's like, no, you're not supposed to be able. And this is only criminals protecting themselves to be able to record someone without their permission. Mm hmm. The trouble is if you say, okay, would you mind, hold on a minute, I'm going to turn on my recorder. Would you mind threatening my life again? Tell me oh, exactly how it is you're going to kill me. They're not going to say anything. So, I mean, it's not admissible in court. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, is when you're pleading for your life with your friends, look, you've been alienated. Or When you're in these programs, that's how they deal with you. They alienate you. They separate you from everybody else, make you feel alone. And all by yourself. Any friends you had, if they can turn them against you, they will. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, if they can make you sound a little bit crazy. And come on, when we talk about this stuff, even we know how crazy it sounds. <laughs> right. They almost yeah. want to bite your own lip and then finish a sentence sometimes mm-hmm. for what people are going to look at you like. When, when you tell them that, it, uh, uh, you know, it's like I can show them. Uh, but. Even so, if they don't even bother to listen to you. So, you know, if the the word's coming out, well, it may be just in your head. You know, I had this doctor playing these word games with me, and it's like, honestly, maybe it's the tattoos and the long hair that, you know, you don't (laughs) get it, dude. Of the three degrees I've got, two of them are doctorates. Uh, uh, um, You're not talking to a fool. He's telling me, well, you know, when you have epilepsy, uh, there's something in your brain that causes it to, you know, signal the short circuit, and that's what gives you those seizures. See, but if you've been through, you know, a, a, a lot of emotional trauma, uh, like PTSD, it, uh, you know, it, it's so overwhelming that it short circuits in your brain and causes those little seizures. See, it's not the same as when. It's a physical short circuiting in your brain and causing a seizure. This is your emotions creating a short circuit in your brain and causing you a seizure. So it's in your head. You need to talk to a psychiatrist. Oh, you know what? They don't even, these guys, that's what I mean by these doctors, they should be fired, honestly. They don't know how to deal with ultras. They don't know how to deal with people who have been targeted. Uh, It's a big problem. It really is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it wasn't going anywhere because of all the meds that I was taking. 
mm-hmm. create the narcolepsy and create the seizures and create, you know, some of the things, my diabetes is, is genetic. My grandfather had it, all right? Stroke on the same, on the left side, same as me. So that's not ultra induced, but some of this other stuff is like God only knows what it'll do to you. They never did it to anybody successfully before me. Right. You know, yeah, and you get side in effects. The same way, mm-hmm. You know, and, and even since. So, you know, you, you, there's no telling what that stuff does. Well, that's the whole idea that that's the experimentation. You know, they like to see what the side effects are and what's going on, how the bioelectric field holds up and all sorts well, of things. Well, that's the thing, too, about a lot of these other people that, that I've been finding. Not everybody was intended to be a super soldier, quote. There were so many things that they did mm-hmm. with over 150 plus programs. But I got to tell you, for for anyone like me, you know, let's say, oh, um, let's say they had a, a, a serum that might make you psychic, or it just might make you stoned, okay? Uh, but you want a nice, good psychic warrior, all right? So they got me there, they've had me since I was born, they've been hardening my bones, they've been injecting me against every freaking disease known to man and everything so far everything's holding up they got a lot invested in me now they'd like me to be psychic let's say i'm not i didn't get psychic this way i'm just making this up so that it's just easy to explain what they do to other people Mm -hmm. all right so they will take a person uh let's say this person deborah has is goes to the doctor she's having migraines she gets to the doctor at this clinic. It's a CIA funded clinic. They're going to give them extra money, build an extra wing or whatever they have. If they allow them to do a certain amount of human experimentation. So when Deborah's getting her flu shot, she's also getting a little of this experimental psychic drug. Mm-hmm. And if it doesn't work in her and, you know, all of a sudden she thinks she's a chicken and starts laying square eggs. Hey, uh, you know, who knows what happened to the doctor will make up a fancy Latin name. Yeah, you got, uh, oh, my gosh, you're a chicken disease, uh, and, and, and that's it. But they're not going to inject me with it. Now, they turn around and they inject Frank with another version of the psychic thing, and it works for him. All of a sudden, Frank's doing freaking psychic shows at circuses and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Now they'll try that on me. Now, all the people, the, the people that they tested those drugs and those techniques and procedures on are regular people they can follow you from your doctor's office they don't even have to have a government doctor come they can hack his files and find everything that's going on from you that they did that your doctor might not even know about Mm -hmm. but they you know having access to your records like that they can monitor your situation excuse me (laughs) I knocked over the mic. Oh, okay. <laughs> they could knock over in. Yeah, yeah. They could monitor your situation without really getting too much involved or exposing themselves too much. Mm-hmm. But uh, for you or these people that, that's gotten it, well, they're going to monitor. They're, they, they're only going to allow you so much freedom. They don't want you leaving the country or leaving you know out of their control group. They want to have be able to get their hands on you because there's things they're experimenting on you. If you give them too much trouble, or if they feel it's going the wrong way and they got to cover up, well, they may want to get rid of you. You know, tie up the loose ends, get rid of the evidence. Right. That's what they did in '73 when Richard Helm started destroying all of our records. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, they'd be serving multiple life terms or death sentences or something. They'd be digging them up just to kill them again mm-hmm. if they ever had to answer for all the things they did to us. But that's what they, that's what a lot of people, a lot of TI's involvement in the Ultra and Monarch programs are. They're part of the experiments. They're not necessarily intended to ever become this, that, or anything else. There's some that they do. There's candidates that they do. But the rest of them are just guinea pigs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which it, is equally it's, a shame. Yeah, it's, it's 24-7 torture. I mean, no-touch torture, um, you know, this is what is such a huge, huge thing. And these people who are perpetrators in these areas need to be tried as war criminals. End of story. You know, once again, you were talking about the free will, and the free will is huge. If you don't honor somebody's free will, and that means freedom of thought, freedom of speech, freedom of communication in your own mind. And that's what I look at with all the censorship about freedom of speech. 
and these people are just chomping at the bit to interface so they can stop people from talking. Um, so they're starting to speak, and then there's a neuro linguistic that interfaces on and tries to rewrite a sentence for them. I mean, that's the AI interface. So once again, you can see where this can go so bad, so quick on a global scale with a new world order or no world order agenda. Uh huh. I mean, really bad, John. And that's why I mean, I know that technology really freaking well, uh, unfortunately. But um, we have a couple more questions here. Let's see. Um, Jerry was asking, does John have any idea what's going on in Antarctica? Oh man, well, there's there's a lot going on, and evidently. Huh, that's what kind of time we got here. Oh, we all have right. about half hour. All right, I can, <laughs> all right, I, all right, because this is kind of complicated. There's a reason, there's a reason why, well, it wasn't just me as other people. I, I just learned, I had different teachers over the years, so some of the things that I learned. When the continents started drifting apart, oh, a little more than about 12,000 years ago, the last ice age, all right, there's some interesting evidence. Now, there's what the academia try to tell you, and then there's what the evidence is and what that suggests. Um, somebody once, a guy, I think his name was Hapgood or something, suggested that as the continents drifted apart, uh, it's like uh, areas like around Russia, Siberia, moved uh, like two, 3,000 miles north. And then a uh, continent like Antarctica moved about an equal distance south. Now, uh, other people have taken and extrapolated on that. Uh, prior to that last ice age, the sea levels were much, much lower. So we got a lot of cities. What, what, what's continental shelf now was once uh, oceanside property, you know, waterfront property. Uh, but now it's underwater because the seas rose from the last glacier. Well, sometime around then, and I mean the evidence is there. They find the mastodons and woolly rhinos. They're, fr they're frozen solid with buttercups still in their mouth and in their stomach, undigested buttercups. Mm -hmm. That's a springtime temperate type flower. It doesn't grow in the snow. All right. So these woolly mammoths and rhinos and stuff like that, we're all eating springtime buttercups, and, and within hours, within hours, they shifted 3,000 miles no, north into a deep freeze. And, and, and something else happened. Now, a man named Solon uh, once talked about Atlantis, a continent in, in a central sea, all right? If you were to take our globe and turn it so Antarctica would not be on the bottom, but maybe in the middle, you'd see a continent in a central sea touching Africa, uh, the Americas, Europe, you know, the, uh, uh, Australia. It, it, you know, it drifted south. So when you're looking for Atlantis, now we've been finding these megalithic structures all over the earth. Everybody, you say megalithic People either think of Puma Punku, Tiwakan, or uh, the, you know, the Aztecs, or you think of Stonehenge, mm -hmm. but there's thousands and thousands more than that, and they're huge. You know, the, the 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 pyramids, the Temple of the Moon, all of that kind of stuff, and the, the these like. Original man didn't know he could cut out small bricks. You know, he cut out these freaking stones the size of buildings. Um, and, and doing this, well, what you're going to find in Antarctica frozen over is, see, we find these things in the jungles, we find them in the mountaintops in Russia and China and all over, but when you get to Antarctica, you're going to find it under two miles of ice, an entire, a very advanced civilization, they knew the entire globe, all right, uh, from about 12,000 years ago, untouched. If you're going to find the technology that was able to move those stones like uh, like the stones at Baalbek and and the the uh, uh, the obelisk there and the Aswan there that that's like that's like well over 1,100 tons. Mm -hmm. uh, this is where you're going to find the technology that moved and crafted those things. If it exists anywhere on this earth, that's where. Now all of a sudden, in the last year or so, in China, I, I like to try to check things through different news sources. In China, they have a nouveau rich there because of all the building and everything that's going. They're very rich, have been taking 
luxury vacations to Antarctica. Hmm. Some of the new Russian rich have been doing the same. John Kerry's been there. We had an astronaut back there about a month ago sending crazy tweets about something very evil being there. Mm -hmm. There is a luxury base there. Now, it's one thing, you know, millionaires and billionaires like throwing their money on research scientists and stuff, but none of them ever like to take luxury vacations looking over their shoulders in a lab. Mm -hmm. These people are coming, the rich and the powerful, from all over the world down to <clears throat> Antarctica. We already know about the pyramids. There, that, That's not a theory. You can check those on Google Maps. There were... There were projects since the Nazis in the 30s going down there for stuff about UFOs. Uh, I even found a mission patch that had, you know, Antarctica, the continent, and a little magnifying glass showing pyramids, like in the desert in Egypt, pyramids mm -hmm. uh, in, 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 in the continent. So, I mean, people knew about them being there, the rich and the powerful, the people that don't like to tell us anything or want us to know the truth about anything. They've been going down there in droves. Mm -hmm. And like I said, explaining about maybe Atlantis and that, and then the Nazis being down there. You got Dr. Stephen Greer talking about the one part of the black government against another part going to try to get us with a false flag of alien UFOs. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm right near Area 51. There's not a lot of activity that way coming out there, but down there towards Antarctica and South America and the UFO flaps bigger than it ever was. So if, it, mm -hmm. if they were going to launch anything from anywhere, that would be the place they'd do it. Mm -hmm. And if you wanted to buffalo the whole world, that'd be the, you know, that the elite rich could stay down there. If they got a base, down, who's going to get down there to attack them? Right. If they do it from Area 51 here, you have every freaking geek sitting on a mountainside in Nevada <laughs> telling you they're seeing fleets of flying saucers going all over the place. Right. It's got to be from Antarctica. And, and, and for that reason, I believe that's your Atlantis. Mm -hmm. Makes a lot if of sense. If it shifted like that and the evidence suggests that it was, then that's what they're going to find down there. Mm -hmm. we already seen the, the pyramids sticking up out of the snow. There's more to there than that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. That's on my bucket list. I'd like to get out over there. And you know, if the rich are down there, it's got to be something profitable, something right. they want, something they covet bad. And I was going to tell you real quick, not to change the subject, but you know, you're right in the heart of the CIA to some degree because I hear that they oversee a lot at Area 51. So. Oh yeah, yeah and that's and about spooks. Yeah, Nellis to me uh, uh, on the other side. Uh, uh, yeah, I've been down here a few times. Not often, but a few times since the 50s. Every time I came to Vegas, it's completely different. Mm -hmm. Never looks the same way twice. Yeah, but yeah, it is. It is Spook City out here. Um, yeah, it's it's one of the parts I don't like about it. Uh, it there's not enough natural here. It's kind of like a a concrete honeycomb, and mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, I get the medicines and the things I need. I'm with some people that. You know, we need each other, and uh, I got the experience to help them, and uh, they can help me. And I get narcoleptic, make sure I take my meds, and and that's I'll good. actually get better. Yeah, that's a buddy system. I like that too. That where you have some kind of well, it's just good to have some kind of a buddy system. Yeah, we good. got nobody else in the world that has a clue. I mean, right. you can try, but oh yeah, you need people who know what's going on that you yeah. can trust. There's no doubt about it. And trust, of course, is another. I mean, you can try to trust people, but, you know, they it's, get triggered and they turn on a dime. It, so After last year, the, the, the deal I told you there about, you know, with, with my daughter and that, it's like, I don't know who to trust anymore. Right. Um, yeah. You know, um, it does bother me. It does it does upset me greatly. Um, and, I, and, it, and I just got to keep relying on me and, and, and some prayer. Fortunately, I pray a lot. <laughs> Good. Well, you know, we all do. I mean, and to some degree, we're just sending the energy out there on the, at the highest level. I mean, it's the best we can do because of all the other things they're trying to under undermine everything we're doing or, or sending, uh, you know, transmissions and signals that run interference. So, yeah, it's just. Oh, we've been seeing that like crazy here. Yeah. Um, uh, Melissa has, uh, she has hearing aids mm -hmm. and uh, they beam something 
into her hearing. Now, oh. I, I, I've used the meters like I show in that little CYA video in that to, to, right. to check things. But she has these, imagine having these two little earbuds in your ears. And then all of a sudden, it makes a whistle kind of like somebody right in your ears, while they're in your ears, a, a shriek. Did you could hear like somebody whistling for their dog down the street that loud? Oh, wow. Sometimes there, there'll be a signal beaming through here, and there'll be this piercing shriek coming out of her ears, and you, you just know she's got to be excruciating. Oh, pain. man, that's horrible. I'm so sorry it to is, hear that. It, when, it, when, it, when it hits, you know she, she she's hurting. Sometimes she'll get so frustrated, too. But like I say, we, we are pulling for each other here. Right. All we got, and... Um, and that aspect of our lives, I think, has improved a little. That's good. Hey, do you guys hear the th the hum at all? Uh, I know there's a Colorado hum. There's one in Denver. There's one in Boulder. I know there's a lot. You know, the, you used to have one in New Mexico. I mean, it's, it's everywhere. But yeah. I hear it's been ramped up a little bit. I was wondering if you hear that at all. Actually, I, I, I think I hear it in the background even now. Uh, uh, yeah, mostly what I get here is afterburners coming out of Nellis. Uh-huh. Right. Uh, uh, but I do, you know, I do when it's quiet, you, you, do, you do hear kind of a, uh, it's a steady hum. Right. Yeah. I've noticed one out here that I've never noticed in my entire life. And I'm trying to pinpoint the signal. But yeah, it's, it's quite obvious. And I've heard it from other people. And then, you know, it seems like it's just getting more and more, more strength to it. So I'm trying to um, look at that on a different scale. But, you know, ultra low frequency in general is very annoying, if, even if it's an ultra low frequency. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, some of us are wired naturally for all kinds of sounds. So it's, it's yeah, what a mess. The but ultras, I tend to feel somewhere around my solar plexus, and it and it's uh, it, it feels like a heaviness. Mm. Um, almost feels like, like fear, but uh, me, I got to have something to be afraid of. It's right. not that I'm fearless. It's just I got to know what it is that uh, has me concerned. Right. I think um, that's another thing about being an ultra. You're, you're calibrated to be in dark corridors and dangerous areas because there's that, they override, there's there's this uh, there's a way of, of a brainwave interface that they just kind of calibrate you to, to harmful situations where you don't feel that you're in danger because you have a mission to do or something you have to take care of. At least that um, they put people in harm's way a lot when they're calibrated and they don't yeah, feel anything. They, they get, well, everything's for the extreme. It, right. You know, it has to be, you know, the, the more they can get you, the, they, they can get that adrenaline pumped up. And, and then the, when you're off balance, you're also easy to hypnotize. So the suggestions come through stronger. Mm -hmm. So when you're in that constant state of uncertainty, it, it, it tends to work for you. Um, right. Well, it, it still does. Uh, uh, even with me, it's just, like I say, after oh, over the years, it's like, man, that, that anxiety button's got to wear out sometimes. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Gets to be an old game they're playing there. You know, um, there's another question from Olive. Let's see. Uh, ask John, does he believe that no matter how hard they try to kill a person, some people cannot be touched? <laughs> yeah, if you'd have asked me that a few years ago, I might argue. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I used to I used to have a friend that I used to argue with and she'd say I was immortal and I said no I'm pretty sure I could die I, I've been back and forth over that line a few times and, and she'd say well why aren't you dead and it's, well something always happens mm -hmm. you know something one time I was just about frozen and this black guy found me and carried me into a, to an emergency room and they managed to thaw my keister out uh, you know another time uh, I don't know what the hell happened down in Guatemala and Belize with those people and that, but something, something intervenes. Mm -hmm. um, I don't, you know, I've seen some, I've learned from some wonderful masters and people along the way. I've seen people that I thought was so much better than me in so many ways that I learned from. I, I just about idolize them and I'd seen them fall. I've seen them killed. And, and, you know, I don't think of myself as absolutely unbeatable. I, you know, uh, I, I don't have that mindset. <laughs> In fact, most of the time I go out, I think I'm pretty well screwed this time. I'm probably not coming back, but I'm going to make the best show of it that I possibly can. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then I always come home. And yep. I always come through. And I've been shot up and, and stabbed up and I've been hit by cars. I've been burned. 
Um, yeah, I kind of get the feeling that nobody's going to go before their time. I agree. Yeah, and as, if people are taking your time in the illusion, if they're stealing your moments, I think that gives That's you right. more of a lifespan. To be honest with you, I think it's kind of like the universe tends to um, to compromise, or not compromise, but compensate for that, you know, to some degree. I always I always kind of had that feeling. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a, it used to be a proverb Solomon wrote. He says, you know, he that rolls a stone will have it rolled on him, and he that digs a pit shall fall therein. It was a, a tactic the bad guys, the robbers, used to use back about three, four thousand years ago, that, you know, they'd wait for the caravans and the passes and they'd roll rocks down on them and, you know, then they can just kind of go down and, you know, pick up all the treasure and, and stuff and, and go away with the loot. Or they'd dig pits like tiger traps and, and catch the people in the pits. And yeah, But Solomon said that there's a particular type of thing. I used to think of myself as the epitome of that particular proverb. Mm-hmm. because I'd be walking down the street, you know, and the next thing you know, two guys would jump out to mug me, <laughs> take one look at me and say, oh, I'm sorry, I thought you were somebody else. Yeah, I don't think they want to mess with you, quite honestly. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, because it, it, it never worked out good. Uh-huh. You remind <laughs> I, me of a Viking, like like Thor, you know, it's that kind of energy. Yeah, I feel kind of Thor today. <laughs> yeah, that's what you remind me of. Got that... <laughs> yeah, if anybody's ever seen, I'm sure people know what you look like, but yeah, check uh, check out John's videos. And once again, is it under is it under John Storm? I thought it was just under John on your videos. Uh, the videos was Storm fifty three. That's okay. the that's the YouTube channel. And Storm is with two M's. Okay, because I see one here that's under John, and it looks well, like it says yeah. I don't know what they're doing with that. Okay. Uh, uh, Google's been doing some strange stuff. Uh, they've also been been uh, taking out some of my stuff too. Oh, yeah, that's typical. Not surprised. Yeah, into the, they're getting back into that again. And it's kind of like, all right, I'll just find more ways to put up more. Oh, just, well, we know. I mean, we have so much documentation in here. It's, you know, it's that fake news thing, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. And so <laughs> that's, that's what pisses me off. You know, you want the real news? Yeah, better tune into this show. Um, yeah. Not the, not the crap out there in mainstream. Never once have I heard mainstream address any type of mind control or, or psychotronics or any type of targeted individuals with respect so, yeah, there's no doubt about there, that one. A problem, you know. Uh, um, I may say sometimes it, it's it's almost unbelievable it, it, to, to the to the extent that they'll take things, and uh, uh, yeah, I think they're all having a meltdown. You know what I see, and this is another thing I've been looking at. Um, you know, it's like the split I always talk about, where you have the the incomplete versus the complete universe. And it seems like those of us who are complete unto ourselves, even though we've been through terrible programs, we're still ascending in consciousness. We're still moving on and ascending and breaking orbit as almost like another breakaway. And then there's the others. The others are these like bizarro type, like zombified units that are completely brainwashed and socially engineered that don't seem to be able to grow or, or step up to higher frequencies. And and I'm seeing a split. I'm seeing a complete split. So I it, believe I don't, you will. Yeah, it's really wild to, to watch this thing. Um, I'd rather see it from a parallax view, from an off-world view. I really prefer, and I'm not saying dead, I'm saying like in another sector, alive. But, you know. I I think you're going to find it very difficult to tell the difference at, at, at when that point comes. But there will be a separation. There has to be. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, you know, not to, you know, all of us have, you know, all of us make mistakes. But some of us don't really deserve to live here. Some of us deserve very, very much to live here. This is the bed they made. Mm -hmm. Uh, So that means somehow or another, the sheep and the goats, the wheat and the tares, all that kind of stuff has got to be sorted. Mm Mm-hmm. And yep. we're coming. We're coming to that. This this paradigm has to come to an end. For too long, mankind has not been able to evolve to move on spiritually. The religions have been holding them back. Not absolutely everybody, because funny thing about this awakening thing is, I got friends that are Buddhists, Hindus. Mm-hmm. My doctor's a very interesting Hindu man. Uh, um, I, I've got. I have personal friends, Muslims. Some living Jews living in Jerusalem uh, 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 but of these awake people 
Mm-hmm. We all seem to, regardless of the, the, whatever religion or culture we came out of, seems to be just like, okay, he's wearing a red jacket today. But the person inside is people just like you and me. You know, we're, we're talking about the same things. We're noticing the same things. The same things have priority and value to us. Mm-hmm. But not the same things that the whole rest of the world is going. We're the guys that everybody's looking at like we're all going the wrong way down a one-way street. Mm-hmm. Um, and actually, we're just kind of standing still while the lemmings are going off the cliff. Yep. Uh, <laughs> Good analogy. <laughs> it's true. No, it's crazy. I'm telling you. But no, I agree with you on that one. And that's that's the whole idea behind um, stepping up to higher dimensional spaces and frequencies and, and being on a path of spirit, regardless of your religious backgrounds or whatever it is. It's it's stepping up and understanding, um, when I say more about enlightenment than anything else, being able to see it. But yeah. yeah. It, it's one thing. Some people, some religious people got this do's and don'ts, you know, they, they love their Ten Commandments. I think Ten, ten Commandments are great things. I don't disagree with any of them, um, but they look at it as a list of do's. You do this, you're good. You do that, you're not. You do this, you do do that, do this, do that. And the the real awakened people don't see it as a list of do's and don'ts. You never do this. You never do that. It's okay to do this during this time. Uh, they don't have those kind of values. Mm-hmm. They just seem to understand why you don't do this. It's not. We need a list of what's. We need a list of why. Once, once you know why, the what takes care of itself. Mm-hmm. You, know, you, you, you know, basically, you're supposed to live well with each other. It's supposed to be a good thing for people to be, you know, live together and to know each other and, 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 and to all that, you know, that kind of stuff that you, you don't have to think, well, gee, I don't want to steal all his stuff or his food or, you know, beat him up. Yeah, because right. I'm supposed to care about that. I know why. Yeah, don't you just have like a moral compass? I mean, I don't believe I was ever taught, you know, that sort of thing. I just knew it. So it's one of those things where you just know right from wrong, good from evil, uh, what's appropriate, what's not appropriate. You don't have to be told or dictated to. You don't need babysitting. I don't know. I guess we're just different animals. But, um, you know, I think a lot of people, maybe they do need to be told. But for beings like us, we we already know. Uh, So it's just a protocol. Yeah. But see, they'll never get good because, you know, the, the problem is, is this conditioning this 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 brainwashing is going on all the time they don't get away from it no the minute they turn on the tv it goes back again they pick up a newspaper it's there you look up at the billboard all of this is erroneous information erroneous values unnatural values half these people don't know they're 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 questioning their own genders Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're confused. Yep. They're completely been running interference on so many levels that people are completely messed up. I agree. And those Once of us who have while, immunity. I expect to see a genetic anomaly where somebody was probably a woman in a man's body or vice versa. But so many. No, there's some there's something going on. They're running interference or there's there's definitely running something. Right. I Everything's say, unnatural. Yeah. The only way people these days want to experience nature is from the other side of a pane of glass. Yep. Yep. Yeah, and that's unfortunate because I love nature so much. And, you know, we're going to be running out of time here in the illusion of space and time, yeah. John. You know, it's wonderful yeah. to have you on. I, I love having you join us. You're so wise and enlightened. And each time, like I said, each time you're on the show, you get stronger and stronger and stronger. So I love that about you. But let everybody know how to get in touch with you, how to contact you, and also where they can access your books again and all that good stuff. All right. Um, uh, well, my name is John Storm. The storm is spelled with two M's, uh, like the weather, but with two M's. Uh, I do have uh, about 15 books or so at bookricks.com. Some of them are nice, entertaining, yet educational reading. Uh, Practical Witchery is a bit more esoteric. Uh, Gives you a lot of groundwork, not for just what, but why certain things work or why they won't work. Um, uh, So you can find my books on Bookricks. They're free to download. I encourage you, you can go ahead and print them out if you want, print copies. You have the author's permission. This is me. Uh, Mm -hmm. uh, There's no copyright problem. I own the copyright. I said you can do it, you can do it. Uh, I also have a Facebook page if you want to reach me there. You know, if I don't know you, that's okay. I'll accept you anyway. You know, you get out of line too bad. Uh, It's okay to disagree with me, but don't become a shill on anybody. Uh, but you can contact me on Facebook. I'll, I'll okay you. Yep. Uh, 
And you have your uh, YouTube channel, and I encourage everybody to, to look at your YouTube channel. Storm 53 and, and on YouTube. There's a bunch of videos there. I don't know what's left. Oh, now. there's so much awesome. Deadliest American Ultra Techniques. I love that one, John. Yeah, that was a lot of people get to thinking, you know, if I don't have a gun and there's this and that about the guns, and it's kind of like, now me, I couldn't relax until I was sure my skills were everything they were supposed to be. Mm -hmm. You know, got one person in the world to take care of me. He ain't a cop and it ain't a gun. Guns run out of bullets. They misfire. But, uh, you know, you're looking to master everything you can around you. Uh, Own your own ultra. (laughs) That's right. Absolutely. And um, I want to thank everybody in the chat room. You guys have asked some really good questions tonight. So thanks for texting. It's been incredible. And thank everybody for tuning in tonight. I hope you appreciate it, John. I know I always do. Uh, Stay tuned for Shiny Side Out with David Dunger and Becky coming up next to sell you on into the night with their awesome show from Down Under. And I believe they are discussing their topic would be ancient technology again. That's going to be awesome. So tune into their show. And uh, anything you want to mention? I know we have in bulk coming up here. Uh, Anything you want to say in the next? I guess we have maybe a minute plus or minus here. John. Ah, in bulk. Sheesh, I almost forgot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We're starting to get, yeah, the days are going to start getting a little bit longer, about another two, three minutes of daylight every day. Oh, that's that'll be great, actually. I'm kind of looking forward to hopefully getting out and, and uh, enjoying the weather and maybe getting a little more nature out here. Well, that sounds great. Well, with that being said, we're going to transfer out oh, in a good way over here and, and welcome Shiny Side Out to come on in. So thanks, everybody. Have a great weekend. And thank you again, John. It's been awesome to have you on tonight. Okay, it was fun. Bye.